This is Michael Scott Hollish with the Reform Report, and we have an awesome interview for you guys today. However, before we get into that, I've had a few of you contact me and inquire about my upcoming appearance on the Johnny and Jean show on Crime Flick. All I can tell you is that it is going to happen. We don't have a definitive date set yet. They were floating around uh, shooting it this upcoming Saturday. However, I had a prior commitment this weekend with some film work that I am locked in for, so I could not do this weekend. Uh, I don't have any details on the show. I just know that both myself and Roberto Falcone are going to be on it, and uh, that that is coming up. So I will be posting any updates on that as I get them on the Reform Report Facebook page. So for those of you on Facebook, go over there, like the page, and follow it. You'll get updates there. Uh, also, obviously, go and subscribe to the Johnny and Gene show if you haven't yet. Both those guys have an awesome show, and I just want to give them a big congratulations on that. Uh, John A. Light and Gene Barello are good friends of mine. They've been bringing on some very intriguing guests on the topic of organized crime and uh, providing some excellent information and material. So congratulations to them. So jumping over to our interview today, we have Francesco Frank Fiordolino. He was a former Bonanno crime family mobster. We've actually had Frank on our program before, and in fact, our previous interview with Frank was his first media interview he had ever given. So if you have not listened to that interview, yeah, you might want to definitely go check that out. That basically delves into Frank's childhood, his growing up around the life. Uh, he had several family members who were mobbed up and those influences that were all around him for him to make that choice to go down the path of organized crime and the repercussions of it, the trials, etc. So definitely you might uh, want to go check that out for sure. This interview that we're doing today isn't really a part two per se, but it kind of picks up where the other one leaves off uh, with the fall of the Joe Messino era Bonanno crime family. Frank gives great firsthand insight into this. He was around all of these guys on the street and he was around all of these guys in prison and in fact for a period was Joe Messino's cellmate. And so he has great firsthand insight. That is our interview today. And before we jump into that, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our Patreon and PayPal supporters, James Francis, Anthony Sparacino, Gianna Capriato, and my good friend Dave. I really appreciate all you guys and everything that y'all do to assist me in keeping the channel running. And to all of our subscribers, I super appreciate all of you guys for continuing to tune in chime in, liking the videos, sharing the videos. Uh, if you know anybody that would be interested in the content that we provide, please let them know, share the videos with them. And uh, yeah, it's super appreciated. So without further ado, here is my interview with Frank Fiordolino. All right, I'm here with my buddy Frank Fiordolino. And uh, this is actually our second interview together. We've done an interview a while back. I, I don't know, was that your first interview you ever did, Frank? Yes, yeah, it actually was. Very awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. for uh, those tuning into this, y'all should probably go check that out uh, first or check it out after you listen to this. It, uh, we definitely delve into Frank's uh, getting his feet wet into... Uh, his later activities in uh, organized crime, but also uh, his youth and uh, and later on with his incarceration and trials a little bit we talk about, but uh, definitely go check that out. Well, let's talk about the uh, 
you know, uh, the, the end of the Bonanno family as far as, you know, what, what you were experiencing with, uh, you know, the end of the Messina, the Messino era and uh, with those guys. So we'll, we'll talk about that because I, I think a lot of people would be interested in that. When I, when I got to understand the mob a little better, I would say I was in my mid-teens. I mean, of course, when we discussed this on the last show, that, yeah, of course, I, I, I knew what the mob was. Well, I knew being around that aura, you know, um, that, that it, it was, one, criminal, prestigious, romantic, yeah, that too, I guess. But getting to understand the mob, it was, it was around 15, 60. I'd say it was a, when John Gotti came to... Uh, the prominence, and that was probably what eighty-five, December of eighty-five. Right. Castellano hit. Right. Yes. And and not only that, I mean, I was going to school at Christ the King, and um, I was going to school with a couple of kids from that neighborhood, and and, and two of his nephews. So, you know, you want to know more about it. I mean, you know, you know enough. It starts at home. I I knew what was going on at home to a certain extent. You know. Right. Uh, but. But now, you know, I want to educate myself uh, to this. So, well, back then, the Gambino family was, was every, it was the biggest family that was out there. You had the Gotti thing going, you had the Castellano hitting, whatever. Not so for the Bonanno family at this time period. You know, they had just got hit hard with the Donnie Brasco case a couple of years right. prior. Right. And, and, and not only that, they had the Pizza Connection case on the other faction, the Sicilian faction. That it just got hit. And then the commission case, I don't know if that was in 86 or 85. Um, that was in 80. I, well, it, it, I, think, I believe it started in 85 because I think Castellano, they were already, he was going to be involved in that, obviously. And, um, you know, he obviously, he got hit. I think that's when all those indictments were starting to drop on those guys, you know. Right, that, that was that. Giuliani was a head prosecutor in that Absolutely. case. I remember... And, uh, and, and, and as far as the Bonanno family, Joe Messina was involved in that case also, and so was Sal Vital, uh, Vitali. And uh, Joe ended up getting eight years for a conspiracy to murder for the three captains, which is ironic, ironic because he later gets um, indicted on the same case. Not on the conspiracy, we actually the act, okay. which he was kind of like dumbfounded because he, uh, he you know, Double, double jeopardy doesn't apply because one was a conspiracy and the other one was actually a murder. So anyhow, that was going on. And um, Ristelli was our boss, was our boss, was the Bonanno family boss because obviously at that time I was 15. I, I, I you know. Right. He wasn't my boss. Um, and uh, while that was going on, Joe was the underboss and Sal ended up walking on that case. Vital, and and um, he he was watching the family for Joe, so the family was in pretty bad shape. We had a FBI agent that uh, infiltrate. Right. We had the we had we had the pizza connection case that took almost wiped out the Sicilian faction of the family. The only one that really really came clean on that case was uh, one of Carl Michelanti's bodyguards, Paolo Amato, who ended up getting five years. Now, did he have anything to do with the pizza? Con- I don't know. I don't know. But he ended up getting five years. Most of those guys got their heads blown off 30, 40 years, 200 years, you know? Right, right. And, and, and that was done. So the family was in limbo for a while. Right. You know? Now, now was, it, it was, was it the Donnie Brasco ordeal that pretty much took you guys away from the, the, the table with the commission? Right, there was too much drug dealing, whatever they thought. I mean, they all do it, but it, 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 it's always good to fucking blame it on the ones that are the most least powerful at the time, you know that. Right, of and course. That was, that, yeah, okay. that's right. just, that's human nature. Right, yeah, but because if you think, about, you think about it, all, a lot of the guys that were closest to John Gotti, including Gene, were pushing heroin, you know? Right, right, right. right. So it was, you know, it's just that hypocr- hypocrisy that lives within the mob. Right. So, so that well, they weren't part. They didn't have their seat in their commission. And meanwhile, you had people like Tommy Karate out there, little crews like that, doing their things. Well, they're little, big crews, but Frank Lino and the family was a little bit of a wreck. And so you got to give Salvatelli a lot of credit here, because during that time where Joe Messina's in jail, this is like from like 
86 to 93. He's basically holding the family together. And it kind of regrouped. You know, we didn't even, believe it or not, we didn't even have a rat. With all that infiltration that went on, you know? It, it, it was pretty cool in that, in that way, you know? And then, and then you got, um, you got with all that going on, you got um, Messino inside for seven years, Sal regrouping, and John Gotti taking um, Metallion under the, under his wing. Right, because because Joe Joe and John grew up together, didn't they? Yeah, but they grew up together. But at the same time, John was that kind of like um, you know a little bit of a little bit of static with the Genovese family and the Lucchese families. Right. Right. So it, it was good. It was good. It worked out for both parties. Ninety, John goes away. The family, the Gambino family, takes a hit, and the Bonanno family starts getting up a little bit with the help of the the Gambino family. In '93, Joe comes out. Joe comes out, and instead of beating uh, all that good with his brother-in-law. He starts worrying about his brother-in-law. Why is he hanging out with these guys on 101st Day with the Gambino guys all the time? Mm -hmm. And he starts hearing stories that Sal starts acting like all these guys. He's being fancy. And he kind of like, you know, he's right at this point. He's like, oh, fuck. Maybe, maybe I, uh," he's looking at not not to, not to, I'm not saying trust him. He's going to like his flashiness, Mm -hmm. you know? Right. And, and, with everything that's going on and the, and the Fed's taking everybody down, you have the Colombo War, they're almost decimated, you know? Um, you have the Genovese, the only ones that are standing at this time. The Lucchese's are going through that thing. The Bonanno family is under the radar. So, he, Joe comes up with this plan, let's get rid of all the clubs, all these little fucking things. Let's forget about, you know, uh, let, let, let's go underground for a little bit. And that's what happens. You Then he opens up a restaurant on Mass Mid Queens. Mm-hmm. Casablanca, and um, he, 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 this is what, 94, 95, and during this, uh, and, and during the, he opens up this place up, you know, he, he, he opens it for the neighborhood, but he's not really doing that well, you know, so he just tells everybody from now on, come over here and eat in my place, so he has all these gangsters, first of all, he's telling them to close their places up and not to hang out, but now he's telling everybody to come over there, eat, Check out my place if you want to have parties. The feds will probably be like, wow, we don't see none of these guys around. All we have to do is hang out in front of Joe's place and they won't fucking meet it. Right, you know? right. It's very, 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 very... It's all about money now. Right, yeah, right. You know, and, and he has this, uh, the place is Casablanca, like the, the movie. Mm-hmm. He has this Humphrey Bogart thing, <laughs> statue coming right there. You know, when you walk, it looks like a real life person. You know, I can't tell you how many times I almost bumped into him. Like, what the fuck? I said, excuse me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah, so he started what, what, how, how was the food there? It was all uh, mediocre. I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't nothing to brag about. But, you know, you people being there with Joe Messina's place, so they were like, wow, you know, you give them shit on the stick, they'll tell you it was the best thing they ever had. Right, right, right. You know, just kissing ass. I so, mean, they had a little separate room, like a catering little room. Mm-hmm. And everybody would have their parties there. And he started making money because, well, the guys started going there, you know. Baptisms, uh, no, nah, not weddings, stuff like uh, company parties, right. all that stuff. I mean, if your dog, if mobster's dog got want to get baptized, then he'll do him a favor and have it in their toe. <laughs> <laughs> That's how right. much ass kissing was going on. Right. So during this time, you know, um, with all these other families taking hits except the Genovese, Joe starts getting um, press. He's on the press, the next Don, the big Don, the last Don. The whole nine yards, and the feds start wanting to put him down, you know? Right. He, he becomes the head of the commission. Uh, you know, we, we went from, like, within a seven, eight-year span from nothing to one of the head of the, you know, he's the head of the commission now. Wow. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know he took over the commission. Oh, well, yeah, he did. He did. Sure did. Wow. Yep. So, you know, they, now they're looking to get people. Mm-hmm. The first crew they come after is... One of the most vulnerable crews because they're doing a lot of crazy ass shit. Then they go after the Bat Bats Beach crew. Right. Why? Because the Pinal family and the boss, Anthony Spiro, they hang around his calf stand. They're, they're around them, the kids are around them, whatever. So they figure, if they get Anthony, 
we risked Anthony, you know, maybe he'll flip, and then from there we could go after Joe. Right, yeah, because definitely Anthony is a direct conduit to uh, to Joe for sure. Right. right. So that, that so they go after that that crew, and then they go after the Janini crew, figuring a lot of these guys, they're real banano guys, Baldo, them and that. Those guys flip, they give us Baldo, maybe Baldo gives us Joe. Right. So those are like the first crews that hit. And that's the beginning of the end. This is about, oh, shit, from 96 to about 99. All these indictments. And uh, matter of fact, Jim Walden was a prosecutor in that case. And then Greg Andrews took over for him after and started prosecuting all those cases. It was organized crime cases. Mostly it was Operation Joe Messina. That's what it seemed like anyway. It was like 2001, the first 12 guys get arrested. So they take a, this time, it was March 19, 2001, because I got indicted, superseded three months later on the same case. 12 guys came in. And it was me and somebody else after that. So the biggest guy on that case was, there was actually two. There was Rito Grimaldi who had a uh, sports, uh, had a sports uh, charge, you know, sports betting. Right. And there was TG, Anthony Graziano. Oh, right, right. Absolutely. And they figured if he can, they can break those guys, then we could go after Joe. Or if they could break people like me who could put these people... In a compromising in, in, position. In a compromise with, with big stuff. But I couldn't. I couldn't put them, you know, the only thing we ever did with me and Vito was probably sports game. That's so what we never talked about anything, you know? Right. And at that point was TG. Was and he, he was, was my was, guy. Vito was my guy. Vito Grimaldi. So it was like walking on eggshells. You couldn't talk about nothing with these guys, you know? Right. I mean? And was, uh, at that point, was TG, was he a captain? Uh, TG was a captain, yes. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I mean, but then back to Vito, it was like... One time, I, there was, was one kid that was just fucking robbing the machines. I said, uh, before I, before he told me, yeah, get, you know, beat his ass, but don't use no fucking bats or nothing, you know, because he was old school. He's like, yeah, you know, it had to fit the crime, and I was in another place in my head, you know, so to, to his credit, yeah, yeah, you know, if I would have had somebody else, like a Tommy Karate for a fucking guy, right. I would probably have eight bodies. Right, right. You know? Yeah, make sure you use that something where he doesn't get back up. Exactly. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So back to that. We get in and nobody flips. And Robert Lino's in that case too. And he got superseded. He was doing time somewhere and he got and he got taken in for Louis Tuzio murder. Okay. Now Louis Tuzio was the guy who killed Gus Farachi. Oh, uh, okay. Right. So he they thought he was gonna get made and they just they, they, they caught him on a sly and they didn't like like kind of the guy in uh, Goodfellas. Right. Right, so there's like 14 of us indicted in that case. Nobody talks that can bring her. And if they are, it's, they, 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 they had this one guy there. He had something to do with Willie Riviello, and he flipped the same day. We never seen him again, but that was some kind of fucking, like, scam. And he left. Mm -hmm. Come October, they hit us with another 27 guys. This is where it gets uh, tricky. They get Canarella and Copa. Now, I don't know this, but Copa had... I, I didn't until I read the indictment, obviously. Copa had something. He got charged with the the, the Sonny Black murder, and Canarella got a hit with the Post murder, and somebody else, Anthony Mira. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because that was his uncle somehow, whatever. And he was looking at two, uh, he had two bodies, and the other guy had one. Oh, so he was uh, part of the Mira thing? Canarella was, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, they were all there. This is about October. They're talking, they look all as cool as, cool, cool as cucumbers. We're all in, like, going to court. We're all going to front of the judges for our own reasons, you know. Um, the prosecutor's going to do his thing, and we all go there. Now, while we're there, I overhear, like, uh, Copra asked Canarella if he can have... Oh, no, Canarella asked Copra if he can have that money invested in, in some kind of stock because, you know, he's going to need it now that they're going to go to trial and all. Ken Will's kid did not want to be in jail at all. Nobody wants to be in jail, but you could tell. You know, you, you just this kid, that, he doesn't belong here, you know? Right. And two weeks later, they flip. And Copa goes with them. Not with them exactly, but individual ways, you know. Mm -hmm. And the government got him. Those are the first two main members to flip for the Banano family right there. Wow. Yeah, that's well, it. That, and that's and big because those guys... 
sorry? I was going to say, that's big because those guys were connected to some big hits, too, you know? Right, right. They're, they're right. This is what opens Pandora's box. They put Salvatale in there, you see what I mean? But we'll get to him, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, with that, they get Joey D'Amico, who's Candarella's cousin. He doesn't even make it in the parking lot of, uh, of uh, you know, the FBI building because he's already fucking talking. Right. <laughs> he's like, well, okay. I'll, I'll tell you what you want to know, you know, and boom, they get those guys and they flip. Now with that, they got the, 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 the it starts rolling. It's what at this point, hmm, I'm thinking it's 2002, but I could be wrong. By 2003, they, they indict Joe Messina, Sal Vitale, and 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 a couple two other people. I think Danny Mangeli and somebody else. Different cases, but they all bring them in. And, and Sal flips right after that, a month or two months after. And that's where, where everybody gets screwed. He brings in eight, he brings in to eight, eight to ten murders, okay? Eight that right. he was involved in and more. Well, and, and not, that, only, not only that, once Joe saw Sal flip, he knew the writing was on the wall. No, he thought he only had, to, he thought in his mind, all he had to beat was, was Joe. I mean, uh, his brother-in-law. He's like, that's all I gotta be. He forgot, you know. Frank Lino then flipped after that. Um, Jimmy the Tataglio, uh, Tataglio, he was flipping out on the street. So this is what's going on, and I was ready to go to fucking trial before these guys. And this was October something of 2003, and right. I was like six days into it, and I'm like, fucking, you, you know, it, it was starting to get weird. It was starting. To, like, 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 I said this before, like the Titanic, you remember the violin, the violin scene? Right. <laughs> everybody, was, everybody was jumping off the boat real, real quick, you know? And I was like, well, you know what, fuck this. After a while, uh, 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 time to roll, you know? Right. And that's what happened. And you see what happened after, after trial. Joe goes to trial, gets his head, I think he lost every count. And um, that was it. So now with uh, with Joe, was he able to like work out a deal with the feds where he was able to keep some of his money to take care of his family or anything? Well, that's what it was. They were taking a lot of a lot of stuff from him, and he um, at one point I don't know how true it was, but they said they were ready to throw his own mother out of the house, you know. But um, even if that was true, which we, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Um, you, you know, you're Joe Messina. You want you want that legacy. You know, you, you're taking on the chin. You know, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, he's old school. I mean, think of how many people he uh, whacked out for being a rat. Or how many- it was a business. It was right. a business. Right. I remember first hearing it, and I was like, "What?" Some CEO. I was in uh, some jail out in Jersey, and some guy came in. He goes, "You know who flipped it?" I was like, "Who?" Oh. I was like, "Nah, you're out of your fucking mind. You're, you're crazy." I thought, "Who the fuck's gonna take that deal anyway?" You know? Right. Why would they give him a deal? And what kind of fucking... He's like 65, 66 at the time, maybe. Well, what is he going to get, 20 years? But well, it's money. They made him catch shit. Well, that's, that was it. Because, I mean, to them, they're like, look, you know, we're, you're, you're going to be doing your time. You basically got a death sentence. But, however... You know, maybe we, you know, it was like you said, it was uh, the cutting a money deal to where his family be taken care of. And, and what they got in return was insight into some of the other families, you know, insight into the commission meetings. And He gave a lot. He dug up a lot. He, he, you know, looking looking back, he did. And um, he ended up getting 10 years. Do they have him like in witness protection or something? I, I, personally, I don't know. But I, I would think somebody like that would stay. You know, he's not the most liked person. Not that I am, but I'm not him, you know what I mean? Right, and he's an old man. We're talking talking about, uh, you know, molehills to mountains. You know, the damage that he did versus, you know, like you said, someone like yourself. I mean, he caused some serious, you know, irreparable damage. (laughs) You know what I mean? To a lot of, to to the different, to not just the Bonanos, but to the other families, too. And and not only that, while he was in, I, I, I did hear through the grapevine, they did not, treat him all too well either so he kind of got a, a, a first hand rude awakening how life could be on the outside when you're not Joe Messina no more you know you know regular guys that were just like me and you know you'd be like hey Bo this and that and the next minute you're like no no you're nobody anymore this is, this is where we're at go fuck yourself he got a lot of that that I know 
Uh, which I kind of feel bad because he's old. Who the fuck you want to fuck with an older guy for? And, but, but he did get a lot of that, though. Right. No one's going to give him respect when they don't have to. It's like... Well, like it, yeah, yeah, no. Nah. You know, it, it, I mean, he was bitching that I had something to do with his forfeitures in there and all that shit. I said, well, fucker, I had as much as anybody else did. That you fucking had negative. I'm not one guy talked against you. You had 15 guys, so. Right. Go, go figure it out yourself. You still want to bitch about that? Right. Now, now, when you were talking with him, was that after he already rolled? Yeah, I couldn't talk to him when we both rolled. That's just that they don't do that. That's like a conflict of interest right there. Uh, okay. They don't so, want you to cooperate, you know, anything. So right. you can't talk after the fact. They, they separate you. Let's say there's six units in the whole system. Right. They'll, uh, they'll separate. If you th- they think that you've ever had any kind of contact on the outside, they'll separate you. They, 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 they're pretty smart about that crap. Um, But, yeah, that was the beginning of the end right there. So in a nutshell. Guys like uh, Tony Graziano, so, you know, when they got an indictment, they just took it on the chin, did their time, he gets out, and, you know, I mean, obviously that guy... Hey, TG, yeah, TG, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the way I see things is like this, look, and even for the guys outside there, that's why they're not getting involved in a lot of real violent stuff, and don't get me wrong, if they have to, there's guys out there that will, don't, don't, let's not say the mob is different, let's not, you know, people want to say that all day, it's not, you get the right guy, you, you kill you, there's no problem, Right. but... They, they, they frown upon certain things because it does bring heat and 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 and, and everybody has a number. There's certain people that uh, depend on the age, a lot of factors come in. There's a number. I'll do fifteen years, I'll come out, fuck it. You know, I'll get back into this game and then guys that are fifty are like, oh, I can't do twenty years no more, you know? Right. You know, so that, that a lot of shit that, that, that's why you see a lot of older guys get get um, in difficult cases where the government don't think they have really good case. They'll give them lower numbers so they can take that plea, figuring they'll die in there anyway. Right, right, absolutely. You know, your 60 will give you 15, you know, because if you're going to cost us money and we don't really, we're solid on our case. But they wouldn't give me 15 years. Right, of course not. Because they figure when I come out, I'm just going to do the same thing. Right, you're young, exactly. Right. <laughs> it's very interesting that uh, with this COVID-19 ordeal, that mm-hmm. that they actually let Vinny Asaro out of prison because of COVID nineteen. <laughs> it's like that that guy has good luck, you know. Um, that guy must have some good luck, you know. Hey, what the fuck? Well, he doesn't have it in gamble, that's for sure. <laughs> right, right. No, right. No, no, no. no. But uh, yeah, good for him. I mean, what the fuck? I, well, there's certain people that shouldn't be in there after an age, uh, a certain age anyway. You know what I mean? Right. For certain things, yeah. You know, I mean, if you if you go into a school and kill people, it's fucking you should be put down. But I, I'm not I'm not part of that system, so who knows? Yeah, he. I don't make those decisions. That guy has to be damn. He has to be like in his 80s, right? Shit, I thought he was old <laughs> when I, when I knew him. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. He got to be at least 85. I would think. That's what I was asking uh, Gene Barello. I'm like, man, that right. dude, that guy has to be like one of the most senior Bonanno guys on the street, you know? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, oh, oh, Rito's up there too, you know? TG died? I'm pretty sure. When he got that last charge where his uh, son-in-law, I guess, wore a wire on him or something. and Hector, yeah. yeah. He was part of that first 12 of, of, of us getting uh, locked up too, Hector was. Hector really Tagen. nice guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 you, you, yeah, yeah. Did you did you know him? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, Hector was pretty cool, pretty tough guy too. And, and, and uh, he's one of those guys when you're in the can, you want around. You know what I mean? Good with his hands. Very good with his hands. Right. right. Six foot four, six three. Oh, okay. Right on. And really nice, really good, really good, really good. Um, I remember TG was telling me, you know, uh, he's a good kid. You know, he. Fucking knocks, knocks people out in uh, one shot. He might be Puerto Rican, he goes to me, but he's really good. I, I didn't even ask all that, you know what I mean? Right, I right. I said, okay, cool. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Everybody tells for different reasons. It, 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 it's, it, it, it depends on time, too. I, I believe that, truly, though. Right. Yeah, and, and absolutely. I mean, everybody has their own reasons, and as you said, it, 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 it deals with obviously their own personal circumstances and that's sometimes the thing it's, it's being vindictive sometimes it's just that moment 
I mean, I got in and I, I wasn't about that shit at all until fucking after a while. I just got fucking pissed. Well, for my own reasons, I had my own reasons. Right. Well, in your situation, and that's the thing, you know, it's you can't really judge uh, people across the board for a a specific act because in your predicament. You know, there was a lot of intangibles to him. I, I mean, I, there was people that I knew that I was close to that were hanging out with people that were actually telling on me. Right. Well, not only that, yeah. all, yeah. all of these senior officials of your family were flipping. So, I mean, when you have multiple captains, multiple soldiers. Well, I've said this before. That definitely, that definitely had a lot to do with it. If I would, I said it, and what I meant was I, don't, I wasn't going to be the first one. I wasn't going to be the first one. I would, I would put my. Even though my family don't talk to me, I wouldn't put them through that shit. You know, at least, you know, um, people got to think, they go, before, you know, well, this guy talked, that guy talked. And, and my family ain't about that. They, you, they, don't, they don't care. I talked, and that's, that's their beef with me, whatever. Right. But, you know, it made it easier, put it that way. When I decided to flip, and I flipped, I think, six days before trial. You know, I wasn't going there. I said, shit, no. Do you um do you think your family will ever like get over their issue with that? And I don't know. It's been like twenty years now. Um, right. I, you know, someone tells me no. Right. And someone tells me I don't. Uh, and, and the other and the other side of me says I really don't care if it's gonna give you. They feel it's gonna give them a problem, or or they just don't want it anyway, or it's gonna be a problem for both of us. Either one of us gonna get hurt over this decision because you know. My brother got a temper, I got a temper, we get into it, who knows? You know, we both, you know, it could be bad for both of us. Yeah, exactly. You're right, 100%. You know? So, yeah, yeah no. for sure. All right, All Frankie, right. I, I appreciate yeah. you, man. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right, well, okay, cool. Bye. All right, bud. See ya.